Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. This is my favourite armchair, but I'd really like a stool to be able to put my feet up on. I thought I'd sketch out a rough idea of what I wanted. This is not a plan with dimensions, just a rough shape of what I want it to look like. With an idea sketched out, I can find some wood first to make the legs. I've got this little bit of oak. This is an off cut off a beam of an old house. I've got a few cracks in and definitely needs some cleaning up. On the planer, I get three faces cleaned up. You'd normally do two faces and then the other ones on the thicknesser, but this is too big to fit through my machine. I just had to be careful and continuously check for square. I've had this bit of oak for a few years and never done anything with it because I've not been able to resaw it. But now with this machine, I have the capacity to do that. As this is an old dry bit of oak, I'm going to do this in a few shallow passes. Once I've made the first cut, I flip the bit of wood over and make the same cut but from the other side. I can now raise the blade a bit more and repeat the process. I work my way up to get the blade at full height and then I can finish the cut. This cut is 70mm wide. Now I can turn the bit of wood on its side, pass it through, so I end up with some 70mm square bits. I have four bits cut, but they're still rough on both ends. I get one end cleaned up on the miter saw, and then I can set up a stop block and get them all cut to the same length. None of the little off cuts go to waste in my workshop. I save them all up, and now that it's autumn, they're perfect for keeping me warm. With the fire stocked up, I can go back to making these legs. I want them to have a taper, so I'm just going to mark out where I want the taper to start and stop. I haven't got a formula for the taper, or an angle in mind. I'm really just drawing what I think will look nice. I could easily cut these tapers on the bandsaw, but for a nicer finish and a bit more consistency, I'm going to knock up a quick jig. I already had some wood cut that works as a runner. I've got this little scrap of ply. I'm just going to move over so it's just over the blade. This will then get trimmed off by the blade later on. I get some CA glue put on the runner. I can get the bit of ply put into place and then get it all weighted down with my trusty bit of railway line. When it's all dry, I can get it pushed through the saw, letting the blade trim off that edge of the ply. Now I want to line up that taper I drew against that cleanly cut edge. When I've got it in position, I can struggle with getting a clamp on one-handed to temporarily hold it in place. I want to attach a couple of fences so that I can easily position the legs in the same place each time to make the cuts. This is just a bit of wood I've salvaged out of my scrap bin that I'm going to glue on the side, get it clamped up, and then I'm going to put another little block at the bottom as a stop. Just nick this. I'm pinching that clamp off the mitre saw as a way to hold the oak in place. I drill a 12mm hole into the fence, and then that clamp fits in with a nice snug fit. The bit of oak goes along the fence to the stop and then I put a little block of wood in and get it clamped down. Now it's ready to use, so it slides along the track and cuts the taper. With the first taper cut I can undo the clamp, flip the leg over 90 degrees, get it clamped up again and then take another pass. 
I could do four tapers per leg, but I think it would look nice just to have two. I get this done for all four of the legs. To attach the four legs together, I need to make some wooden aprons. I've got this bit of rough sawn oak, so first I'm going to break it down to some smaller bits. This is just going to make it a bit easier for me to plane down. Even easier would be to buy some ready planed oak, but this is much cheaper and I'm very mean. This board was quite cupped, so I got one edge flattened and then I could get a side done as well. With one flat side and edge, I can then get it ripped down on the table saw. These boards still have one rough surface, so I can reconfigure the machine and get that side cleaned up as well. I can get the legs laid out to determine how big I want the stool to be. With those measurements, I can then get the bits for the apron cut down on the miter saw. I'm going to get it all joined together with oak dowels, so I can get the bits clamped down onto the bench and then use my Triton dowel joiner. I've got some 75mm by 12 dowels, so I'm plunging in 40mm into both pieces. I get some PVA wood glue put in the holes and on the face of the joint itself. I can then get the oak dowels put in and they need a little tap to seat them in place. I've relocated to my other workbench. It's not quite as big an area to work on, but it's a lot more solid for when you want to hit things with a mallet. Before I started getting put together, I made sure I had everything laid out in the correct position so I could do it as quickly as possible. You can get slower setting glues, but this one goes off in about 10 minutes, so there's a little bit of pressure to get it done. Luckily, and somewhat surprisingly, it actually went together without too many problems. I get it all clamped up, check everything square, and then even though this glue does go off in 10 minutes, I give it overnight to make sure it's fully cured. The next day, the clamps can come off and I give it all a sand down. I work my way up the grids to 120, and I just use the sander to soften the corners a little. I'm just going to use some Danish oil to finish it. I know I always use Danish oil, but it's so cheap and easy to use. Just brush it on, leave it to soak in, and then wipe off any excess. I also think it looks really nice on oak. Whilst I wait for the finish to dry, I can work on the pad. I've got this two inch thick bit of foam. I know I'm mixing Imperial metric, but that's how it was sold. I mark out how big it needs to be for the stool. I want it to overhang slightly and I just mark it out with a sharpie. Previously I've cut foam with a serrated kitchen knife but I thought I'd give the bandsaw a go. And I have to say this is a far easier and more accurate way to cut foam. For the base of the cushion I've got some 18mm ply, so I just need to get this cut down to the same size as the foam. After drawing around the foam pad, I use the track saw to get it cut down to size. This is some wadding I'm going to cover the foam pad in. Before I go any further, I should do a disclaimer. I know very little about woodworking, but I know absolutely nothing about upholstery. So try not to judge me too harshly. So I get this wadding cut down so it's got enough left over to fold over this pad and the backing board. 
To get it attached, I just fold over one side, grab my staple gun, and then get a staple in the center. I can then get the same thing done on all four sides, pulling it reasonably tight as I go. The corners are definitely the tricky part. The centre gets pulled in and stapled down, then one side folded over and stapled, then the other side folded over and stapled. I'm also really terrible at wrapping presents. That didn't go too terribly, but no one's going to see that bit. Now for the important bit, the fabric. And get it laid out, get the pad put on and make sure the pad is square with the pattern. I want to get it cut out the same as the wadding so there's enough left over to fold over. So I get it positioned and then I can get it cut out. Now it's really just a case of doing the same as I did before, getting this all stapled down but now with a little bit more care, because this is the important bit. The good thing with the staple gun is if you don't like how one bit's done, you can just pull the staple out and have another go. With the pad done, I can go back to finishing the base. So I've got these little black rubber feet. They're gonna go on so they don't damage the legs or mark the floor when it's dragged around. They simply just get screwed down into the center of each leg. To attach the pad to the base, I'm going to use these little L brackets and I'm going to get one attached to the centre of each of the aprons. I use an awl to mark a hole and then I'm going to get it screwed in place. It's a bit tight to get my drill in there, so I've got to use a stubby screwdriver on the sides. Now to get the two bits put together. So I'm just going to screw through these L brackets into the 18mm ply base. This should make it really easy to change the pad or the fabric if I ever get bored with this pattern or learn how to do upholstery a bit better. So that's it all done. Now I've finally got somewhere to put my feet up. I can sit back, relax, maybe pour myself a little drink. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreons. And please subscribe for more videos.